Welcome to Kevin's European Garage, and today I'm going to be celebrating the one year anniversary with my Porsche 996 over here. So it's been one full year since I've owned this Porsche 996, and I can't tell you how happy I am to be driving this car. I really enjoy it, and you know what I'm saying, it's actually been pretty reliable. A lot of the problems I had were stuff that I knew about when I bought it, or happened right after, uh, and mainly a lot of it was with the suspension stuff. But every, anything else, I mean, the, the, you know, the engine's great. Uh, it drives much better now that I've been doing a lot of suspension work. If you've been following my videos on this, you can see where I've gone through the whole front suspension and I started working on the rear. And then I, was, I had been waiting for coilovers. And my coilovers finally came in. And here is my new suspension. I'm going to be using the Feel 441 coilover. And uh, so far, my initial impression of them is that I'm actually really, uh, I'm really impressed by them. You know, it looks like the uh, the quality is really good. The workmanship is really nice. The machining of the materials and everything has looked really good. And I went with the upgraded version. I'm going to use the, uh, the Swift Springs instead of their regular springs. So this is one of the rears. And this is a front. And what's nice about the front is it comes with a pillow ball type of mount. And uh, it's pretty stiff. And you can actually adjust the camber over here. So there's no need to upgrade to say a GT3 uh, style um, lower control arm or do anything else because you can kind of get away with just doing this unless you want to widen your track or anything like that. But it's nice you can just uh, use this to adjust the camber on this. And I think you can get like maybe like a half a degree or a little bit more and I'll definitely find out when I bring this in for an alignment. So what's cool about the front is it comes with these uh, sleeves that slide over the coil. So you can actually raise up the front a little higher if necessary so you can get the proper amount of travel depending on what you're doing for the car and how well you want your suspension. So I'm gonna, first I'm gonna try it without this and then uh, let's see what we'll end up seeing what happens with it. And uh, also one of my previous videos, I ended up changing the transmission fluid and I used the uh, Gear 300 by Motul because I was having problems with the uh, with shifting between one to two. That was a little bit, uh, I would say it was a little bit on the slow side and sometimes it would grind. So since I've put this in, I haven't had nearly as much issues, if any at all, practically. My grinding is completely gone. It is a little tiny slow when it's cold out, when, it, when I'm first starting off, but within like a minute or so, it becomes you know easy to shift, much more enjoyable than, than previously. And I think it was in there looking at the previous owner's records, they had Mobile One in there. And uh, since I've gone to the Gear 300, I've been really happy with it. So that also led me to investigate getting into uh, more of uh, what Motul offers. And uh, so I decided I'm gonna give their engine oil a try also. And I'm gonna go with the 300V power based on what they recommend. And the only problem with running this is that uh, it has the ester, the uh, ester core, where it's, it's got a couple, where it's got a lot of different additives and they can be damaging to your catalytic converter. A lot of people say they don't have any problems with it, but there is a possibility for it to happen. So, this car isn't driven that much. I don't drive it daily. I'm not gonna put 20 or 30,000 miles on it a year. So I'm gonna run it and I'm gonna see what happens. And if and if I uh, if I damage my cats, so be it. I damage the cats and I'll, uh, I'll figure it out later. But you know, if you are running a regular street car and you're running, you know, a lot more miles than what I'm doing, they're uh, 8100 series. You know, they have a couple different viscosities that you can use. I, that's also a great thing uh, for on the street. So. I'm just gonna see how this thing goes and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, with it being, uh, with all the additives. So with the additives that they put in this, it should stick to the metal a lot better. And I've heard uh, people having uh, some sort of, a, maybe a little lifter tick and the possibility of some chain noise and that this is taking uh, away a lot of it. So uh, I'm just gonna give this a try. Unfortunately, this stuff is kind of expensive. It's, um, it's gonna cost you well over a hundred bucks to do an oil change but uh, it might be worth it in the long run. And especially, I uh, also heard, you know, people are worried about bore scoring that, that this might help a little bit with that, but you know, we'll see what's happening. My car doesn't have it, but uh, we'll see what happens. And to round it off, I'm also gonna eventually flush out my brakes. So I'm also gonna use the Motul Brake, the 660 series. And uh, this is what they recommend on their site. Uh, they have the 6, uh, 660, the 600, and I think they got a, a, a DOT5, and the 660 uh, is what they recommend. So I'm going to use this too. So far, I've been pretty, I was really impressed with just how my transmission shifting got so much better that it led me to investigate more of their fluids. So I'd like to see how that stuff works out for me. So that uh, should be coming up uh, 
soon. I don't know with the winter coming. We'll see how uh, how much I actually get to drive the car. Uh, if it was like last winter, I got to drive it a lot. Maybe this one, who knows? So let's get a closer look at these coilovers. So what's nice about this compared to a lot of the other ones, not only is this adjustable for height, it's also you can adjust the preload on the spring. So this helps with just how fast you want it to react. You don't want it to react slow or you don't want it to react too fast. So if you follow the instructions on their website, you can set this thing up properly. And so that's a nice little thing because you know a lot of times when you uh, raise and lower a car, all you're doing is taking pressure on and off of the spring and then uh, doing it this way will give you a much better faster reacting ride and that was the front one and now this is a rear one and you can see that it's got the, the mount for the sway bar end link and it's the same thing too is that that you have the adjustment not only for height you also got the adjustment for the preload on the spring these come with the new mounts and you can see that they're just a uh, a rubber mount on top as opposed to the front ones which have a, a pillow ball style mount Like such, these things are adjustable for camber, which is pretty cool. I'm just, uh, again, I'm just really, really impressed by the initial quality of this. I can't wait to get these into the car and uh, start driving around with them because my front strut tops right now, they just, they make a lot of noise going over bumps and uh, my rear rubs a little bit. And uh, just from the, uh, I started measuring my suspension out. I got almost a three quarter of an inch difference between the height of my front to the rear. And that's just, I think that's kind of, uh, standard with the Eibach, uh springs that are on there that everyone I've uh, been reading is saying that the rear def definitely sits lower than the front and uh, that's definitely what's going on with my car. So this will fix it. I'll be able to get the ride height the same, both front and rear. I kind of like the uh, the front a little bit where it's at. I might go just a little bit lower and then I'll raise up the rear to match the front because the like I said, the rear is much lower. So that's my first initial impression of these uh, coilovers. So I can't, like you said, I can't wait to get them to the car and then I'd be able to give you a better idea about how they feel and if they're definitely worth the, uh, worth the price, you know. These things are definitely, they're definitely cheaper than say like an Olin's or any other ones, but uh, I think uh, these might be just as good, if not uh, better in some ways, but uh, we'll find out soon. Another thing that I've uh, noticed that's kind of interesting is that uh, every once in a while I take a look to see what you know what's available in the market for the 996, mainly just around in my area. And the other thing I noticed is a lot of the uh, lower end cars when I was looking for mine, I was able to find stuff that was in the uh, you know 14 to 18 thousand dollar range, and I'm not really seeing that anymore. I'm starting to see uh, more of the higher teens, low 20s, even mid 20s now for some cars that a couple of years ago probably would have only gone for you know for high teens, maybe 20 thousand. So I don't know if this is a trend or not, or if it's just my local area. I have yet to venture out and uh, see what else is available. You know, maybe it might be something to look at if you're trying, if you still haven't bought one of these cars uh, and you're thinking about getting it, you might want to start keeping an eye on, see what's going on with these things. It looks like, uh, at least around me, like the price really hasn't been creeping up, but uh, a lot of the cars that are around that were cheaper, they're no longer there anymore. So thanks for watching Kevin's European Garage. Thanks for uh, watching me talk about the, uh, the one year anniversary gifts I got for my vehicle. I'm so excited. I can't wait to start putting the suspension in. It's something I've been wanting to do since day one on this car. I've been wanting to put coilovers in there. But I wanted to take care of other things first. And uh, now that I'm finally here, this, I feel like uh, I, feel, I just have a lot of excitement. And I can't wait to get these things in there and actually see what it's like. And, uh, you know, pretty soon I'll be doing some other things. I got a few other little things that are floating around that I might give a try. I'm going to try some muffler bypass pipes. So I got a set of these things to give a try. I don't know if I'm actually going to use them on the car for any real length of time, but uh, it just be interesting to hear what this thing sounds like without any mufflers on it. And then eventually I'll probably do like one of the, you know, the Gundo hack or the Fister hack, whatever you want to call it. And I'll probably end up doing that and call it a, uh, and call it a done. So just in the meantime, this actually might be a lot of fun to give this a try. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like my video, don't forget to hit the uh, bell so you can get notified when I'm coming out with new videos. And I uh, hope to see you soon.